Who's in the building? What's going on? It's Daily. Uh huh. <laughs> Straight out of Manchester. Yes, 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 yes. 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 <laughs> and you've been heating up for a little while, man, because you was on like 2011 BBC poll. You yep. know what I mean? They was really tipping you from then. Yeah. And like a lot of people really kind of expected you to maybe explode and yeah. stomp the charts in 2011. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't like that. Yeah, it, it was a weird one, man. It's like because um, you, obviously you don't choose to get put on those polls. It's like well, whoever the whoever the the people who choose, which obviously is always a good thing. I was very glad to get it, but the fact was, you know, I, my album wasn't done. So it's like you know, you had people like Jesse J, James Blake, uh, you know, people who were literally ready. Their albums were done, ready to go. So I think I was being compared to them, which was which was good, but not at the same time. So I mean, I did put out my mixtape last year, which was. Um, which is like an album's worth of material, but it wasn't my official release. Um, but it's all good, man. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's exposure, and it's always good to be to be put in those um, to be classed with those those kind of people. So, and that's the those who wait mixtape. Yes. So, like for those that don't know, man, tell us a you know, give us a brief history into the musical life of Daily. Musical life of Daily. Well, um, I'm from Manchester originally, um, and I spent you know my first my first. Uh, making music making days were, were in Manchester um, and I just found it hard in, in Manchester because the musical scene isn't as um, it's not as varied it's not you can't you know if you're an indie band or a folk acoustic thing you, you're, you're kind of good but if you're doing anything outside that it's kind of hard to get your music out there and um, so I spent a lot of time in my bedroom making music and listening to the artists that I, that I love mm. and um, and it wasn't until I started venturing out and coming down to London um, and finding, you know, open mics and jam sessions and and all that all that stuff that I really started to to get a vibe and and feel like I should be should be doing it down here. So um, so yes, yeah, so that's what I did. So I just upped and moved, uh, came down here and just tried to just did everything I could to kind of get my face and my music out there. Really, mm, sounds like I followed the yellow brick road. Kind of yeah, it kind of is, you know. <laughs> and you know, I was, I was I've been fortunate to uh, to like you know. Uh, I came down. I got signed um, after doing a, a, a bunch of gigs and some uh, a thing I did for the BBC. Um, and I just worked with some, you know, some ama- had some amazing experiences. Worked with some, you know, some really good artists. Um, I did a, some stuff with the Gorillas, Wretch Three Two, mm-hmm. uh, Marsha Ambrosius, Estelle. Like, you know, it's been I've been really blessed, at, you know, to date with what I've done. So, so what it is, SK Vibe Maker in the building with Daily. We just came out a smoking gun. I like to play the Sam Frank remix on quite, you know, quite free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So you got the lyric in there. You're gonna feel me in your heart like a bully in your chest. Yes. Oh my <laughs> days, man. <laughs> what kind of lines are these, man? <laughs> Break down that line for me, man. Well, you know, it's it's that thing of someone um, coming to the end of a relationship and 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 n- not be you know not being able to stand the thought of that person being with someone else. You know what I mean? That like everyone's kind of had that feeling, and obviously I exaggerate it for the song in the sense that I'm saying I want to <laughs> I want to pop them. You know what I mean? Just yeah. <laughs> end it. But um, but it's you know it, the person saying they can't feel it, they can't feel the feeling. You know, for me or for the relationship or whatever, and then. Um, you know, then it's gonna be a, bu- a bullet. You- you'll feel a bullet. You know, yeah, yeah, so I'll yeah. make you feel something. Yeah, because like some 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 people really thought you was talking about murder. Some people <laughs> thought you was talking suicide. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't think about that. But now nah, it was definitely murder. <laughs> mm. So like, um, you know, a lot of you know, a new artist comes out. People are scraping around, looking for the comparisons. They're trying to make some sort of a, an analysis yeah. of the new artist. Now, with you, you've kind of been described as having a distinctive look and a distinctive voice. Mm that doesn't kind of match like they don't connect together okay the yeah. voice and the and the look yeah, yeah have you heard those those kind of talks yeah I, I get it you know i've had it from from the start you know like even uh like i was saying when I, I, i'd come down and i'd do like an open mic or a show where no one would know who i was because i wasn't from london and and i come in and you know i'd get on stage after an mc or something at an open mic and you could you could already hear the crowd kissing their teeth you know what i mean just like everyone goes to get a drink or whatever and um but i love it man because you know People once they heard me sing, generally, were you yeah. know really into it, They're and um, and it was it's nice to it's just nice to give people something they don't expect and and to see that you know people don't always judge a book by its cover and all mm. that all that stuff. Because you, know? you know the ro- the hair you're rocking the hair the hair <laughs> man it's like you know when people see you they're definitely gonna see the hair yeah you know yeah, what yeah. I mean was this something you was rocking before the music or is this like yeah, a yeah. transformation as a musician? No no it's, it's always it's always been I mean I wasn't born like with my hair <laughs> like that but you know <laughs> but um but I've you know I had it for a while and I've always done stuff you know just what done different stuff with my hair and um mm. you know it's just 
just a, it's for me it's about having an identity and that comes with the music and everything else it's just a it is my identity, so mm. it's. I don't do it for any particular reason. It's just, you know, it's just me. So I don't want you. Uh, and this next question I'm about to ask you, I don't want you to get all generic on me because people <laughs> be saying, "Oh, I'm just an artist. I don't do the boxes and that." But are you kind of cool with the R and B soul categorization? Yeah, definitely, because that's you know that's my that's my influences and that's music that I love and that's why I start you know started making. But I mean, I think it will, and I think with the mixtape, I've, I've tried to. Um, solidify that you know then that's you know but with the album what i'm excited about now is being able to show people and even like an, another thing so you know i am doing a, i'm still doing a, a, a bit of a pop thing you know there's still a pop element to it um and i love you know i listen to a lot of like experimental stuff like uh like even like radiohead image and heap so uh, i think for me i'm you know i'm definitely class myself as a soul vocalist and artist but it's for me it's about being it's more than anything it's about being current you know st- don't i'm not keen on trying to do retro i'm not trying to do a 60s style or a mm-hmm. 70s it's like i want to do you know yeah you know so um that's my thing with the album bringing in all the genres that i like and um yeah hopefully people will see that it although i am that it's there's other elements to it as well so so i see that you've been writing for like near enough 10 years now it's been like near enough 10 years you've been writing songs um, yeah i don't know if it's 10 years you know it might be maybe less than that maybe probably started writing properly when i was about 17 or oh. something so so yeah, just a bit, bit less than ten years. Like, yeah. So how prolific are you with the writing, and what's the main inspiration? I, well, I, ch- I write. I'm writing all the time, um, pretty much. And inspiration comes from different places. It's kind of changed for me since I since I got signed, and because I used to before I got signed, I would just write as and when the mood took me. Mm-hmm. Whereas when I got signed, don't know. Just I just started doing a lot more. So I kind of started to find new sources of inspiration, and you kind of get a bit more creative with it because you don't, you know. You don't necessarily have a new experience to write about every day, but um, I found that with, for me it's like I just need one line. You know what I mean? I just need one line in my head that um, that is that is going around in my head, or it summarizes a situation, and then I just build off from that. So sometimes it's a song title, or um, just a th- something that's bugging me at the time, or something that's whatever. Um, so for me, it's kind of that, just trying to pick up on those things and, and find things that people relate to and, and that people will feel. And you're in good company as well, man. You're signed to levels as well. Yep. Like, obviously, you got your label mate, Rich Free 2, who had a very good 2011, man. Definitely, man. How does it make you feel, like, being part of that label and having, you know, a success story already, man, from a fairly new yeah. label as well? Well, I mean, levels, as, as uh, in general, you know, um, are just, just in, you know, it's an inspiring environment to be in like you say you've got Wretch and um, Yasmin and there's some other artists who are kind of they haven't they haven't had their their thing yet but they're kind of that I know and it's just a creative place and everyone who I work with is inspiring and believes in me and um, I couldn't be happier really you know it's um, it's a perfect place for me to be doing what I'm doing so you expressed before that you know you, you're from Manchester you had to come well you wanted to come to London yeah you know to make it as a musician yeah how important did you really feel that was man did you feel you had to come to London like there was no alternative well I, I'd always previously I'd always because people had said it to me before I did and I was like no 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 I want to stay in Manchester you know I want to represent Manchester and do it from Manchester and um, that's what I wanted to do and I, it was just so hard because there isn't there just statistically you know there's not as much going on and there isn't as much um there aren't as many opportunities there so i really tried to do it from there and um it just got to a point where you know i felt like i was going around in circles and i'm still definitely representing manchester you know i love it it's i'm back there every other week and um and but i think for london you know it's just there's everything everything's here that kind of can can get you out there to, to a wider audience so i'm always representing manchester but um but I love being in London, it's, you know, it's a good place. Between sheets as we sleep, make the words irrelevant. 